what's the, you got an interview? What's yeah, I got an interview. Take a look. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. A reading rainbow. Of death. All right. Today with us on the reading rainbow of death, we have Curtis M. Lawson, author of It's a Bad, 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 Bad World. Um, the short story anthology Black Pantheons, um, horror western novel Devoured, which is also available on audiobook, and then the sequel to Bad World, uh, To Kill an Archangel. Um, I just, I found out about him through, uh, uh, Doug Rinaldi, our first guest and a friend of the show, and, um, have... Got through Black Pantheons, the first Bad World, and most of Devoured, and have found all of it really, uh, it's all really fun read. Um, lots of gore, lots of action. Uh, Black Pantheons is a bit more subtle horror, but the other ones are lots of gore, lots of action, and uh, they read pretty fast for um, not a lot of slow parts in them. So, uh, Curtis, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. And, um... Like I, like I said, uh, pretty much we always just kind of start the show. Um, you have a bit different. The one thing I was going to ask you different than everybody else is, you are horror is a big horror is a big chunk of what you do. But you have a uh, everything um, like the devoured and the bad worlds, especially. Um, they have a bit of a bit more than just horror. Uh, do you consider yourself just a horror writer, or do you kind of just feel that you lean? in that direction but don't feel tied to it i don't necessarily feel tied to horror um it's kind of an easy shorthand for what i do i guess um i consider myself an author of dark fiction and weird fiction um everything i do has a darker element to it for the most part back when i did um i used to do comic books and graphic novels a lot before i started writing shows even when i did superhero stuff um I did a web comic called curse of the black terror and it was a really dark anti-hero kind of thing um i've done some sci-fi kind of stuff but it always tends to have this darker element um like you said with the devoured um that's also it's also a western story it, it's a family story i'm not like family friendly but about family <laughs> yeah and um yeah <laughs> i don't want to confuse anybody out there uh, i have my kids but uh it's a bad 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 world it's Kind of a mash I, I it's one of those things i'm really bad at selling because i don't know how to describe it i'm like oh it's one part you know police procedural one part spy novel one part horror one part cult thriller uh tarantino movie needs dan brown you know um it's so all over the place and when i wrote it i um i just wrote it for for myself for fun i never in a million years thought anybody would buy it or like it <laughs> but it's turned into my most popular book um which is kind of funny since i don't really know how to, to describe it to people yeah and it, it that one especially the bad worlds um i've i've really enjoyed black pantheon um if it's uh lovecrafty in um tone now i know a lot of a lot of yeah. people get compared to lovecraft in that and they'll have the uh the sound a lot of what they write has the sound you don't like nothing in black pantheon has really felt like i'm reading lovecraft but the the feeling i get from reading it the kind of dark nihilistic um uncaring universe is in black pantheon um devoured in black world or bad world especially bad world bad world really feels i think i think old grindhouse cult movies and tarantino set up yeah those those were huge inspirations for it so yes yeah, set up in a horror world um the 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 main just is all these terrible people um after these knives that were uh, i don't know if you ever refer to it as dracula but vlad um three uh they were his knives that kind of grant him the immortality and the vampire powers he's known for and they're just killing each other and other people in order to get them but it's very it's very high-paced action so i the tarantino grindhouse cult i think is is perfect which i haven't got to read a lot of books that feel like that so that's this one was a lot of fun um and 
is that it's interesting that you say that because when people whenever people do reviews of it they always use movies as a point of reference rather than other books which i find kind of interesting and i i my personal uh reason for it is the pace um a lot of times, you know, you'll, you'll be reading a book. Books will tend to get more in detail into backstories and subtleties, and you'll you'll hit slower parts. Bad World doesn't really slow down. It it has it it reads like a popcorn flick watches. Like it just it hits the gas and it goes. Yes, absolutely. And so I think that's probably where the uh, reference is now. Um. I know you said the Grindhouse and Tarantino was the inspiration in it. Uh, was um, was it just something you felt you always wanted to do, or did you maybe feel you needed a change in pace from some of your other stuff, or just like what was kind of that? That's the main one I'm talking about today. I've enjoyed the others a lot, but sure. I've loved that one. But uh, like, what wh- was was it just something that happened, or did you sit down and say, "I want to write a book that feels like this"? No, it was just, it was kind of something that happened. I actually came up with the title first. Um, years before I wrote the book, I just, you know, there was this old movie called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, yes. which I've always enjoyed. And, you know, that's where the idea kind of came from. I, w- I wanted to take that title and do it. It's a bad, 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 bad world. Now, all these awful people in kind of a similar, like, madcap thing where they're, they're just really colorful characters all chasing this MacGuffin or whatnot. But, wanted to have them be awful violent criminals so um that's where the idea came from and it went to i had a couple of different ideas for the story that i developed um and throughout and then eventually i came up with this concept and i just i wanted to do something just fun really and I, i've always enjoyed like that kind of grindhouse cinema uh, i'm a big fan of tarantino and um like exploitation films things like that so I sat down and with that in mind, I just came up with some characters that I thought would be interesting. And then I, on note cards, I wrote down essentially cool scenes that I wanted to happen. And then I just built the plot around that. I was like, oh, I want to have this mercenary fight a church, fight a nun in a church that's all like burnt down and covered in ice. <laughs> and then I want to have, you know, these, these two guys, you know, fight in this apartment with these other two people there. Um, so it really was just kind of like, very uh juvenile and how i structured it initially i was just like a kid like oh i'm gonna have these guys fight here and do this and razors and unicorns <laughs> you know well and and that um, i'd say that's what makes it so fun is um yeah i think so you and and not that it, it's really easy to screw up doing something like that and everything fall apart when you when you kind of say a very simplified story it's just these it, it what what you said it's just these crazy people chasing a MacGuffin there's the story and run with it and it's really easy for that to fall apart you the the action and pacing of it keeps it all tied together the the characters for as horrible as they are they as people they are very interesting characters they're not they don't none of them fall distinctly into any certain archetype I don't think um, there are some that are it, here and there. They are close. This one's this one, but they they all kind of. I noticed they all kind of have really horrible qualities. But then each one of them has this uh, in d- different uh, differing um, levels, a bit of a redeeming quality or a quality. And I use redeeming really loosely. I don't know Eva <laughs> like Eva. And Eva is after it for her son, and there's that's the only one that I think on a human level anyone could relate to. Um, so yeah, I think that in realistically in the real world, she's the only one anybody could actually relate to. But the Rhodesian's been the most popular character. Whenever people talk to me about this book, they they always ask about the Rhodesian. Yeah, and um, and I think it's because he's so over the top. You know? Yeah, yeah, and he does kind of fall a bit into. Um, a bit into an action hero archetype um mainly yes. mainly because you don't get uh you get a little bit of his backstory but you don't get a lot about him he kind of fits the uh boba fett style except with way more screen time like as much screen time as yeah. he gets you don't walk away feeling like you know the character 
he's more yep. his his attitude comes through and who he is comes through but uh but you don't like there's not a real deep character that delve into his character um just enough like i said just enough to give you reason eva i think has a redeeming quality everyone else you give reasons for who they are um yes. most of those reasons fall short of being any bit of sympathetic <laughs> And getting worse, getting worse <laughs> as they go down, which was another thing I enjoyed about it. Like I don't, I don't always have to sympathize with my characters. Eva was, um, Eva was the most sympathetic character, but again, wasn't my favorite. Or not that she's bad, just not the one that I was reading. Or you know, there were other ones I found more ent- entertaining as characters. And I think it's because it really works yeah. that they aren't redeeming. You know. Yeah, you know, one of the things I wanted to do with this book, um, you know, mostly it was just fun, and um, and I wanted to do, you know, I just wanted to do something fun. But with the characters, uh, character is my most, it's my favorite part of writing, and I wanted to explore kind of the the different shades of of you know of irredeemable, and um, and I think it's interesting how we are you know what we have is a is our category of you know moral lows so one of the things i wanted to explore with the rhodesian is you know he's this killer for hire you know he's like you know this guy he has these like racist views because he was from rhodesia back in the day and you know he's all around a bad guy but you know he has limits like he won't kill kids and um then you have Mr. Kingsley, who is, you know, very cordial and, and all around like polite guy, but you know, ruins people's lives. He's like a professional sadist. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to kind of explore um, kind of the different levels of of evil, so to speak, um, and you know, kind of study morality from that point of view. Like, what is you know, is the Rhodesian a worse person than Mr. Kingsley because he has a higher body count or because, you know, he holds to this, you know, racist ideology or is um, sister, you know, sister Michelle, the worst character. Um, and I thought it was interesting to, to kind of look at morality in that way, which is probably a little bit deeper than anybody wants to get with a book about people killing each other over knives but i nerd out over stuff like that so yeah and 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 it does a really great job and that's what it's i i've i've found it hard to talk completely about the book because for it's easy to say it's these terrible people like i've brought up mad 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 or yeah mad 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 world um talking about it i've stopped saying that because i get a lot of blank faces i used to watch that with my parents growing (laughs) up and so i got the title i kind of knew what it was and it being i could tell that's kind of where it came from i was like awesome but i've brought it up to other people it's like you well you've seen that old movie and they're like no it's like oh well that doesn't work (laughs) so i've just stopped but um but there's there's simultaneously very little and a lot going on in the book at the same time. Like this, the story is very bare bones. The characters, um, you don't go all around on the characters, but you, so it, it, it doesn't flesh these full characters out, but at the same time, it delves really deep into specifics like how horrible they are. And like I said, they each have this kind of one, maybe not redeemable but justifiable aspect of who they are like i'm this awful because this yeah. happened and it does drop heavy into those so it may not be a, a complete character study on any of these characters but it also does they none of them come off as one dimensional and so it it works it works either way if you don't want a big character study or get into anything and just fast and action yeah. it reads through and is great but if you enjoy that the it's not that there's a lack of it. I don't. So it's been hard to explain because everything I say, it's like, well, it's that, but it's also not. It's also not that at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's um, one of the things I was really worried about with the second book was the first book just kind of wrote itself. I just, you know, you said I just kind of went to town on these scenes. Um, 
And just by the nature of turning it into a series, I had to give more thought. The plot of the second book, and I had to develop some of the characters more. And I was really concerned that the pacing was going to slow down, and it was kind of going to lose some of the some of the stuff that made the first book special. Um, I'm still kind of concerned about because it, it only came out about a month ago. But so far, people said the pacing is still really fast, and that it's better than the first book. So I'm hoping that as more readers get to it, they'll agree with that <laughs> consensus. Yeah, that that one's next. Uh, that one's one of the next ones on my list. Um, I know I had told you, I'm, and I'm just uh, finishing the last tweaks on stuff. Everything was already sent in and got some files back to redo. But I've been finishing this album. So um, Bad World, I kind of read Broke Up. You know, like chunk here, chunk here, chunk yep. here, and it, it, it's not an overly long book, and I hate doing that yeah. um, on shorter books, anyways. But especially one that action packed. So I got, I think I, I ordered uh, To Kill an Archangel the day you put it up, as soon as the physicals were out. But I haven't touched it because I oh, said right. I, right. <laughs> I am waiting on this until you know I can just sit down and know like one or two sit downs and read it because so I haven't quite got I haven't got to kill to kill an archangel yet but because I don't want to have that break up in it it like I yeah I can understand that, that. fast paced it just it makes it too herky jerky but um the one last thing yeah. I wanted to say about it is just that's a bit of my praise because it's something I don't see people do and it gets back to how you done the characters um the fact that you give them all a justifiable character without worrying about it being redeeming. I think in the end that makes the, that was really what made the whole story work as well as it did. Um, because that's rare. No, Thank you. Normally it'd be like, okay, here's this horrible person. Here's why he's horrible. You'll either get like, this is why he's horrible. Like Eva, you'll get an Eva she's horrible but this is why and they'll come up with a reason that you know yeah i understand that yes i can or you'll get like here's a horrible person we're not going to give him a reason why he's horrible he's just a horrible person you actually actually taking the time to be like here are the justifiable reasons all these characters are terrible people and i'm leaving it that it's not enough it's not enough justification to make them slightly redeeming but I will give you that. Yes. I will give you a lot of the reason why. So, and and you just kind of force people to accept that. Like there's no choice. When you read the book, you you <laughs> you don't get a choice. You don't. You you end up rooting for people, but they're not, no one's anyone you actually want to root for because they're all awful. And you just kind of force readers to say. Yeah, there's no there's no good guys. Yeah, and you just kind of force <laughs> readers to say, all right, deal with that. <laughs> just just deal with this yep. these these people they all have reasons you can understand it's like yeah that's how a person turns out bad but you you still can't forgive them for it and and i think with the tone of the book and the fast-paced action story that fills in that last little bit and really what sells it and like i said i haven't really read too many books that i can think of off the top of my head or movies watch movies or any I can think of off the top of my head, where someone does that so successfully. Like, you know they're horrible. Well, thank you very much. You know they're horrible, but you understand why they're horrible, but the understanding doesn't make it okay. And this it's just such a weird feeling for a story because people like to wrap things up so nice and tight and little bows. This guy was bad, he yeah. died. This guy was good, he saves the day. This guy was bad and turned good, and now we love him. And... And this is just like, some of them live, some of them die, none of them deserve to, the one that might have, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but like pe <laughs> people that you might want to live are probably going to die, people that don't deserve to live, live, people that don't deserve to live also die, and they all do it in these horrific ways, and there you go. <laughs> so, and I think that made when, it feel um, real. It's interesting, when... Um Originally, the book was going to be published by Winlock Press, but some things happened, and that didn't end up going through. They didn't want me to use this title. They didn't want it to be called this Bad, 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 Bad World. They thought it was too long. Nobody would get the movie reference. Um, so it was almost called Almost Everybody Dies. <laughs> <laughs> but, Which is an appropriate title. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that overall um, feeling, I thought for as, as over the top as your story is, the way the care and how horrible the characters are, the way you did them, it made it 
my suspension of disbelief didn't come into uh, I, it, it didn't get tested at all something about how something about how you did the characters that way made everything like I bought at all I was like yes this feels like real life yeah. <laughs> so I mean as as real life as these characters chasing around mystical knives with magic powers can actually get <laughs> and you know not in in a more subtle way i tried to do that with the devoured too with the character of the old man um you know he he's definitely like the hero of the story in the devoured but um you know he does a lot of bad things and he, he's so unapologetic about it because you know kind of like ava he's he's out to save his son and yeah he just has a singular focus in if anyone or anything that gets in his way you know there's there's no line he won't cross for that goal yeah yeah um so it's kind of a theme i like to visit in varying ways in my work so yeah which is, which is another book of yours a everything i've read so far of yours i would recommend the devoured uh, black pantheons and and bad world i would definitely recommend i can't imagine i won't be saying that i also recommend um the, uh, to kill an archangel as well because they they've all been fantastic and they all kind of have that uh, at least the devoured and archangel they have it has a western feel of it's a bad 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 world only just not quite as action paced and more character driven but it it still has that kind of overall feeling to the way you the way you handle characters and the way you push the story um it's that is a western supernatural so so yes i rec I recommend everything you do <laughs> so far thank you very much i appreciate it all right well we're uh we're wrapping about up in 20 minutes right now so um any i know uh i talked to doug about it he was the first guest on our show i know and it's one thing i'm very excited about i know you got a uh uh, uh i can't think of what you do when you two 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 writers writing the same book but you got a book coming out with doug <laughs> collaboration. collaboration there was the word is getting late and I've, i will just woke up from a nap so you got a collaboration coming out with doug <laughs> Um, uh, sometime in the future and what else do you got coming down the pipeline um, well the, the collaboration with Doug is the big thing I just got his kind of um, hopefully his ra last round of edits that I have to go through and we're gonna we're gonna talk to a couple of publishers about that um, that's a cosmic horror story but with a kind of a comedic tone but still very dark um, and Doug and I have a similar sense of humor so I think I think it'll come across well for anyone who's enjoyed either of our works um after that i'm working on the third book and the final book in the bad world series uh which will be called bad world 3 a slight case of armageddon um and that's gonna wrap up the whole storyline with fangs of Olivia and um going to be way more over the top than anything i've ever written <laughs> oh well, that's hopefully i don't jump the shark completely uh, that, and well if you're if you're going to jump a shark i think you're in the right i think bad world is the right is the right uh arena to to jump it in thank you and uh i'm not i'm working um i have a an idea that i'm trying to flesh out for a i think it might be a novella but um it's going to be very music centric and a little bit more subtle and uh singular character driven than my other stuff still supernatural horror still very um violent and dark but it's going to be kind of more quiet about it so but that's in the very infantile stages right now mm. uh, about a thousand words in so <laughs> All right. Well, there That's about it. there are things to look forward to coming from Curtis. Um, I know we brought up Doug. I will go ahead and plug it because I've started it. He just had Fear of uh, Freestanding ab Objects, his anthology, come out. Um, I've already read most of those. Yeah, I've read most of those already. I get lucky enough that he usually sends me drafts, finished drafts or first drafts. And um, that, that one's kind of almost the greatest hits of all my favorite stuff that he's wrote. So I recommend that not to take away from Curtis's stuff. But it's come out, and I haven't had to mention, time to mention it. So that's there. Um, I, we didn't talk about Black Pantheons very much. I am going to specifically plug that before we go right now because it is a fantastic anthology of dark, nihilistic, 
feeling um, Lovecraft tone fiction. I know you said it's not one of the ones that moves as quick as the others, uh, which is a shame. And I admit I bought it because it was short stories and I didn't think I'd have a time to get through Devoured. Um, so I understand why people, whatever that is, I don't know the reason. Um, I probably would have skipped it for the Devoured yeah. as well. But since I didn't and I read it, um, I'm going to take the time right now just to say that should definitely be checked out because it's it's fantastic at capturing that Lovecraft tone. So make sure to plug that Thank one you. one Thank more time before much. we go. And um, that has been the most recent episode of Reading Rainbow of Death. Everybody should go check out. All, all these are on Kindle and on Amazon. You can find all the books on Amazon. Is there anywhere else... Um, you want people to know where they can find you or find your work other than just Amazon and your um, Amazon page? There's uh, curtismlawson.com and if you want you can order directly from me. You can order signed books um, and there's also links to the comics and graphic novels I've done on there, my work on Comixology. All that's linked on my website. So. Well, go hunt down Curtis M. Lawson and check out uh, Bad World and the newest To Kill an Archangel the devoured and black pantheons and then look for all that other stuff coming in the future and thanks again so thanks curtis thanks kurt thanks curtis Can it I call was nice kurt? talking to you you think i could call him kurt you think i you imagine he's not gonna do anything yeah, we'll see do something try something <laughs> you know he might I'll read your book motherfucker i'll he read might. it he already said he didn't like you i probably yeah speaking, speaking of a book hey yeah I got oh Jason. God. Jared a book finally gave me my book for Christmas. Look I bought him that. that for Christmas and gave it to him in April. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes Spook marriage lights. can be an unholy union. Peanut butter in your hair keeps the bug man away. We'll see. I mean, Spook I lights don't know. from Muzzleland Press. It's a uh, short story, so yeah, some good I'm ones in there. Might be able to get through without falling asleep. Some sleep. dandy artwork on the cover. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I'll do our. Hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna give it a shot.